Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a custom silicone mat. Lately I've been building some old model kits. I've got more on the way, I'm having a lot of fun with it, but one way that would make that more enjoyable is to have a silicone mat to work on top of. And that's because silicone is super easy to clean, it's heat resistant, you can throw it in the dishwasher. This is a silicone mat that I bought a long time ago when I made an electronics station for soldering. Of course you can buy these already and there's a lot of different custom types out there, but I thought it would be fun to make my own. So the first step in this is to build a mold so that we can pour silicone into it to create the mat. The idea for the mold is that you're creating a negative space that you're going to pour silicone into, so you're going to peel away the silicone and you end up with a mat. And that means you need to make pockets for all of the things that are going to be in the mat. To make those pockets, I'm going to cut down some pieces of quarter inch MDF and add some bevels to the outside edges so that when you have the mat, the bevels go down. Pieces are going to fall into the inside of each one of the sections and they're not going to get caught in the corners. We'll also add some details to some of the different sections, but first let me cut these down and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now that I've got all these different pieces cut down, added bevels to them, I want to add a little bit of a detail to the middle section. I thought it would be really cool to add a one inch by one inch grid with a ruler across the bottom. I created that in Adobe Illustrator. You could use any program that you wanted to, but I did find a really cool online tool that I want to tell you about because it's free and I just ran across it for making a vector file of a ruler. I'll put a link to it down below, but basically you type in the length of ruler that you want, how many individual tick marks you want within each inch, and it will generate an SVG file for you to use in anything you want. In my case, I brought it into the grid file that I was working on and sent that to the laser, and now we're going to cut that onto the centerpiece for the mat. All right, here's where we're at with all the different pieces. We've got the grid cut into this, and you'll notice that the ruler is backwards because we're making a negative. So when you pour the silicone onto this, it theoretically should go down in all these different little holes and create a positive of each one of these cutouts. And the same goes for all these other pieces that I made as well. I cut some little lines into these pieces with the saw blade. And so when you pour the silicone in, those are going to be raised ribs. That way stuff won't roll around in this section. And I use the same idea to create a separator within this one. So it actually breaks this one shape into two separate pieces on the mat. So the next step is to take all these individual pieces that I've made, lay them out on a big piece, and then build a wall around the outside to contain the silicone. I was working with the idea that there's going to be a quarter inch divider made out of silicone in between each one of these sections. So to figure out the entire width of the whole thing, I'm just pushing all my pieces up next to each other, measuring the actual width of the MDF, and then I'm going to add an inch. And that's because I have one piece, two pieces, three pieces, and four pieces of quarter inch silicone that need to be filled in there. So I'm going to take this full width, add an inch to it, and then that's the size of my piece that's going to go underneath this. When you pour silicone into a mold, it picks up every little detail on purpose. But in the case of this dried glue here, that's going to be a texture on the top of the mat that I don't want. So once this is fully dry, I'm going to go around and sand off any of this glue that's on the surface while trying to leave it in the corner so it seals up that outside corner. And after I get this completely cleaned off, then we'll start putting the pieces in the middle. I've got my mold all completed here and I've got several coats of finish on it. It is very smooth to the touch, but I did notice that I can still feel the MDF a little bit through it. So I think the best option if you wanted to have a fantastic finish on your silicone would be to make these individual pieces out of acrylic or something non-porous. I think that would give you a better finish overall, but this is where we're at, so we're going to go ahead and pour the silicone and try it out. 
Speaking of the silicone, I'm using one that I've never used before. This is called EcoFlex. It's got about a four hour cure time, but that means that it has about a 45 minute working time. So I've got plenty of time to mix this up, make sure the bubbles are out of it and get it poured before it starts to set up. Another reason that I picked this one is because it's clear and can be tinted. So I've got some tint that was recommended to go with this. I'm gonna try to mix up a lot of this and then add a little bit of tint, get it to a blue color that I like before I pour it. And in case you're curious, I actually got a sample pack that has a bunch of different colors in it. There's no orange, unfortunately. I tried to mix the yellow and the red and it didn't really work out like I wanted. So we're just gonna go with one of the colors that are in the kit that I think will still look pretty cool. I have never tinted silicone before, but that looks really awesome. It is a little bit darker than I was hoping, so I actually may add some of the white to it, and that's not gonna make it as translucent, but it may give it kind of like a, I don't know, lighter blue something. I don't really know, I'm experimenting. Let's try it out. The color's looking pretty awesome, so we're gonna put it in this vacuum chamber and try to pull some of the air bubbles out of it before we pour it into the mold. I'm gonna try to pour from one spot and let it run into the mold. Hopefully that will cut down on any bubbles that I didn't get out in the process of degassing. I'm gonna level this thing, try to get it level on the table to make sure that it's not thicker on one side than the other. And then we're gonna leave it for about four hours and see how it turns out. So the first version of that actually went really well. It kept all of the detail in the ruler and the grid and all of that stuff, but it almost worked a little bit too well. There was a little problem that I didn't foresee. The silicone did such a good job at getting detail that it actually went underneath the MDF panels that I created in between those and the MDF bottom. So when I went to pull out the silicone, the little parts that were underneath there ripped off. The mat that I ended up with will totally work just fine, but the top edge has kind of a rough finish on it, so I wanna give it another shot. I modified my mold just a little bit. Since I can't use Bondo at this point, it's a little too far along in the process, I actually took some medium thickness CA glue and ran a small bead along the joints in between these pieces and the bottom. Now this may not get it 100% sealed up, but it will cut down the possibility for the silicone to seep underneath it. Also, the EcoFlex silicone that I used turned out to be really cool. It's very stretchy, very flexible, but I don't have any more of it. I do have this Moldstar 20T. This is stuff I've used before. It's a little bit more rigid. The downside is that this does not have as long of a working time. So I'm probably not gonna have time to degas it, but I am gonna try to tint this one and pour it in and we'll see how it goes. This thing is all set up and ready to pull out of the mold, and I can already tell how much more firm this silicone is, which I knew it was, but it's really interesting to see, and I'll show you in just a minute how firm that is compared to this blue stuff, which is very floppy and very stretchy. So I, this may not actually be the best material for this. If you were trying to measure something along this, it could get stretched and distorted. So it's maybe a good thing that this one didn't really work out as well. Let's pull that one out of the mold. This one turned out fantastic. It's a lot more rigid, still a little flexible, but it snaps back into shape better than the other one did. All of the detail is still there. You can still feel the grid raised up and all the texture down here on this end. And the biggest thing is that that top edge is right. So adding on that CA glue helped a whole lot here.
Honestly, this thing was just going to be an experiment. I didn't really know if it would turn out or not, and the first one turned out pretty well. This one is almost perfect. The only thing I don't like about it is that it looks more like raw salmon than the orange that I was going for, but we can fix that by trying it again. The guys here on the team all want one of these for themselves, so we're going to be making some more. I think we'll make a couple extra and do a giveaway. That'll happen over on Instagram, so if you're not following us over there, make sure to do that, and you'll find out more about the giveaway of one of these mats. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do that and hit the bell so you get notified every time we upload. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Recently, I've been melding, melding? Dang it. Pockets that I want in the, the mat. So we're gonna put it in this pressure pot. No, it's a vacuum chamber. Ah! <laughs> subscribed do that as well that's it for the <laughs> my head's cut off goodness gracious